Hi, and welcome to another Music Manument. I am Tom, and with me is Doug. Hello, Hello the uh, Poet Laureate of Music Manument. The Poet Laureate? Because you were just, you I were was just right, rhyming. right before. I, but the thing is, is nobody heard that part of the rhyme. Well, that I know, was right before we started. That yeah, but I mean, I'll take the label. I, I'll be yeah. the poet laureate. Well, the, well, there's only two of us, so <laughs> one of us has to be the poet laureate, right? <laughs> so I mean, and and you were the namer of it, so I guess that would make you the. I want to say king, but that doesn't work. <laughs> I could be the king. I, mean. I know, but like, who who offers or who's the one that names the people of the, of the, palace? Why why am I thinking like like kings and queens all of a sudden? Like <laughs> why it's, why is medieval Europe from, going uh, through my head right the, now? Uh, you're just still stuck on the royal wedding. <laughs> oh no. Oh God! Did we talk about the royal wedding last week? I don't know. I feel like <laughs> I don't care. I mean, no, I don't should. either, and I don't get it, and I don't understand. It. the The funniest thing that came out of it was there was a quote by, I want to say by, uh, uh, TV's Frank, if you're familiar with Mystery Science Theater. Uh, slightly. Okay. Well, he was one of the. He has a Twitter account. And he was apparently live uh, tweeting, basically like doing like they do on Mystery Science Theater and making fun of things as it was going on. And one of the things he said at the very end, he's just like, "Wow, now they're married. And if two or more of his relatives die, then uh, he will really be an important person, or something like that." <laughs> and I was like, "Wow, that, but that's true. I mean, there there is they have absolutely no power in their entire the entire monarchy. I don't get. So, I, I mean, do they even have? Do they do anything? Um, they night people. They certain. do, and and apparently anyone." <laughs> <laughs> They've knighted some well, pretty strange I think, people. I think you have to have made some significant contribution to British society. Hmm. What? Who, who are you questioning? Well, uh, let's see. Who did they? Oh, who did they knight? That was. It was really strange. Like, didn't they knight? Uh, I don't know why, but Elton John just keeps popping in the head. But that's not the one I'm thinking of. Uh, but they did knight Elton John. Right. They did. And I think they knighted uh, George Michael. Maybe. That's uh, okay. That's fine. Right. But but that's uh, Sir but they didn't Michael. they didn't uh, they didn't invite him to the wedding though. See, this is the problem. I don't care about the wedding, but my wife gets People magazine and Us magazine, and that, that's what it's been for like the past two weeks, and it's going to be for two more weeks. So I have all this dumb knowledge about it. Except the one thing I didn't know was that lady that had the crazy squid hat. I, I didn't know about that until the internet took uh, took hold of it. Uh, are you familiar with that one? No, I didn't see any people with weird hats. Oh, I heard about the weird hats. Yeah, no, uh, I guess the uh, the I don't know bridesmaids or whatever they wear goofy hats. Uh, or huh. no, they're supposed to be fancy hats. They're the kind of hats like they're not really hats at all. They're things that get attached to your hair, but they look like hats. Well, this one had one that looked like it just looked like she had a big giant squid hanging from her head. Um, and uh, people um on the internet made a bunch of memes on it. So. Huh. We but, should really stop talking about this, but I do I know, want to say I'm, I'm telling that, you. Wait, I see. I'm proving that I know way more than I should uh, about yeah, this whole thing, and well, I really yeah, don't care. Yeah, you did that a long time ago, Tom. Uh, <laughs> but I do. When you mention George Michael, um, yeah. it does say um, Sir George Michael a couple places here. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I didn't no, actually I, go to Wikipedia, which is what I should have done. That's true. That's very unlike you. But. I just googled it, but um, what um, I was laughing about—I don't know if you heard me—was one of these article headlines is George Michael thinks Sir Elton John is is like a grumpy old woman. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> uh, I don't know. I just found that funny. That is kind of funny. It's from March thirteenth, two thousand eleven. Hmm. Uh, so recently. I wonder, yeah. I wonder what they're cat fighting about. I don't know. Uh, at first, I thought it said, when I read it before, I thought it said, Sir Alton John is a grumpy old woman. Right. Which I thought was even funnier. That is even but, funnier. But, um, yeah, this one's good, too. Hmm. I like it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess I didn't know that George Michael was British. Um, Wait, you didn't know he was British? I didn't care. Hmm. No, see, now that's the thing. Uh, I did like George Michael and his earlier music. 
I will ad- I will openly admit that, and he is my go-to for karaoke. <laughs> I will sing Faith on any given karaoke visit. I, I remember I, I one time. That. Uh, I've I've never been big into karaoke, but one time we went, went to karaoke with one of my friends. I don't I don't remember why we decided to go this one time, mm-hmm. but we did the uh, the hardcore version of uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, it was pretty hardcore. Wait, the hardcore version? Is there a non-hardcore version, or are you talking about like when Tori Amos did a cover of it, or? No, I'm saying like like Mike and I did like hardcore vocals on it. So like the regular vocals? No, it's like a grunge song, Tom. It's not hardcore. I suppose, I suppose. I don't know. Potato, potato, you know. Which, by the way, I realized um, that particular phrase. It's not like yelling like the, like, like a bambino tranquino or whatever. I can't even think of the words. But, you know, like, there's like, we were just like, And like my mic wasn't even on for for most of it, and yeah. uh, I was still pretty loud. And then they turned it on like halfway through when they figured it out it wasn't on, and I think I just about blew the speakers, and probably some people lost their hearing that night, <laughs> um, very briefly, until they were like, "Oh, that was really loud." Um, oh, I think we went because it was one of my friend's birthday. That's birthday. usually the reason you go. It's yeah. either an office function or somebody's birthday. Really, so one we of the were, two reasons. Well, well, they they went to like karaoke like all the time, like every week. I don't the get that. Person, the person whose birthday it was, and so I was like, all right, well, this one time, I will go. Have you, dude? The, George Michael's name is Georgios Karyakos Panaya, so something like that. That's hmm. ridiculous. I don't. I, I guess I didn't know that. Yeah. So I guess he's Greek. I could see that. He he looks like he's Greek, probably. He's very very olive skinned. Yeah. Um, Whereas most most uh, I I would say most British musicians are very pale. Yeah. Well, you know they're up there in the north. We're up here in the north too, and I guess I'm. I they're, can get pretty they're north pale of the where case. we are. Yes, pretty, that's true. Uh, that's very yeah. true, and and we all do get a bit pale. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right. Well, George Michael doesn't release under Creative Commons, as far as I'm aware. So. Yeah, he might. We don't know. He hasn't really done anything recently that we know of. Yeah, maybe he's on SoundCloud, like Britney Spears and Madonna. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who else was just not, like uh, on SoundCloud uh, recently? Uh, Beastie Boys released their stuff on there. And, yeah, I saw. I saw that. And you know, did you see why they did it? And I don't know if this is true or not. Because all the cool just... kids are doing it. No, uh, because they claim it's because a the um, the studio clean version of the album got leaked online, so they decided just to release the actual album online uh, for streaming, which I thought they were going to do anyway. So I don't know if it was just a marketing thing, but uh, that's what they claim on their website is that they were just like, "Hey, this got leaked," so. Uh, I don't remember the wording, but it, it kind of seemed like they were mad, but at the same time going, suck it, we'll just release it ourselves, you know, was the the, uh, the way that I took it. Yeah, so, well, I'm sure that people are really mad about that. Yeah, no kidding. Way to get back at them. And what a surprise. Oh, no, uh, it, it was being published online? No! <laughs> How did this happen? How could we do this? Um, that was, I like that. That was very cartoonish of me. Um, <laughs> I was just watching The Simpsons, and that seems like something they would do there. Um, but uh, yeah, so they got that streaming, and then who else just? Re- oh, Foo Fighters. Uh, stream- now, are, what, did they put their stuff under Creative Commons? Because the Beastie Boys have done that in the past. Foo Fighters did theirs. Just well, I mean streaming. The, the Beastie Boys, but I, I don't. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't think they did. Um, I was, I was so just. Why are we still talking night. about? This? Yeah. Well, because it's still, it's still, uh, you know, it, it's a step in the right direction. Uh, offering streaming music online, offering a whole album streaming is still a step in a good direction, you know, um, getting the music to the people. So, I mean, you know, that's in, in my book, I think that's a good thing. I am not impressed. You're not impressed? Ah, damn it. I should have done a little soft shoe. Maybe you've been <laughs> impressed. 
<laughs> well, if you you could write a big a good poem, um, <laughs> that's true. Going back to the I don't, rhyming, I don't really know. Are you like the dancer laureate as well? Uh, no, actually, I am not. Um, I, I, aside from a short period of time in my life when I decided to take up break dancing, uh, I am not a dancer whatsoever. Hmm. I was fairly accomplished as a break dancer, though, if I do okay. say so myself. But I was ten at the time. So who knows? <laughs> there are a lot of uh, Beastie Boys remixes on SoundCloud. Um, I'm gonna have to check some of these out. Yeah, I noticed the remix thing too, and I'm not quite sure if that's like uh, they're saying, "Hey, remix it, um, do this with it," you know? Yeah. There's one that's almost certainly incorrectly li- licensed as a uh, By. Maybe I'll play that one next week. <laughs> hmm. Maybe. I wonder if it is just incorrectly, or is it posted by somebody else or posted by them? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, all these remixes are posted by other people, but most of them are like all rights reserved. Hmm. Um, which but this one, somebody put it under by, which they can't really do that. Well, they can't really, they can't really put it under, uh, you know, uh, copyright or you know, all rights reserved either. That is permission. fair. That is fair. <laughs> Are you saying it's Um, fair use, or are you saying that my point is fair? Your point is fair. Okay, good. But I think that's like an extra step. Not only have you taken it upon yourself to um, to remix it, you've also relicensed it. So it's like there's two crimes rather than one. I actually just had um, that sort of similar predicament that I had to make a judgment on. Uh, We did a compilation album of you know I told you about the bands that play other bands. Uh, songs. Uh, well, I, I downloaded two of those tracks and listened to them. Oh, cool. Um, um, I don't remember what the bands were, but I've got them. I've got the song. No, oh, all right. Um, and I I put it up on the site, but I just put it as streaming. But I also put it under um, uh, non commercial share alike um, because you know I it's not our song, but we you know I want people to be able to go. Okay, you can share this with other people, but that's pretty much all you can do with it. And I didn't offer the ability to download it anyway. So. Well, then how did I download it? I don't know. I think I sent you a copy of it. That's just me being nice. No, I don't think you did, dude. Hmm. I found it. I wonder where you found it then. Yeah, no, we, we, we turned off the ability to download it. I know that. Or at least we should have. It's what supposed was the to be. Name, what was the name of the thing again? The Local Love Fest? Local Love Fest. Oh, what didn't you put them on um, Free Music Archive? Not that one. I don't think I put that one on there. And if I did, I... There is a local love fest on Free Music Archive. I'm almost sure. Yeah, but I don't know if I gave it the ability to download or did I? Well, I downloaded it. Oh. So You know what? I meant to turn off the downloading ability. <laughs> I, I, it, then it might be up there. Okay, well, regardless, that wasn't the point of my story. The point of my story was is that, uh, you know, I still put it under not – I actually put it under non-commercial. Because I put it just under the sharing license. And, uh, main well, just reason the was sharing because, is also no derivatives. But right. No, I think I did put no derivatives as well. I, I, I put it across the board. At least I, was, I meant to if I didn't. But uh, that was the whole thing is it was like I had to make that decision because it wasn't our song. Although we did get permission to do it for this compilation, not necessarily. And I, I wanted to just link to it directly online and tell people that they could buy it. But I couldn't find, I mean, the, I couldn't find it anywhere online. I, I don't know where this album is online. I know who did it. And I've contacted them, but that's about it. Otherwise, I don't think, I think it was just a offering for the local event, the CD itself. Yeah. I think it was a short run. So, who so knows? So, it's Lorenzo's Music, colon, 11-02-11, dash, Lorenzo's Music, dash, local love fest, dash, live, comma, high noon saloon. And everything <laughs> is there. Downtown went your way. Dustin Shadows, zoom. <laughs> Oh, that boop. thing! Boom, boom. Yeah, and then, oh, uh, oh, that's the okay. You're talking about the actual live thing. Oh, yeah, the live thing. I was th- that was I I f- figured that was for, uh, free use or fair okay. use. What are you talking? Because it's got I'm, the H bomb Skinstones cover on it, and I got right. another Owen Ladybird cover. I'm talking so, about the actual CD cut. 
the the CD okay. that was created. I didn't know for the there event. was a CD cut. Yeah, until and that's what now. I'm saying is like even I though you were it. saying that, I was ignoring the fact <laughs> that you were saying that. I mean, that's, this is a CD, right? So the, no, the, just that's just it. that's just a, a bootleg recording of the show. Oh well, you've got a CD cover. That's the cover of the actual CD compilation that I was originally talking ah. about. I put that up there. Talk me together. Yes, I, I put that up there because it needed a cover. I don't know. I didn't have any pictures of the yeah. show. So, although there was, uh, they were shooting video all over the damn place. There was like five cameras syncing up there and running into the soundboard, and I haven't seen anything. I, I don't know. The whole, the whole thing was a mystery. Like getting the show itself, kind of heard about it last minute. Uh, we wrote the song that night and recorded it, or we listened to the song we wanted to do, recorded it, and then sent it off to him like the next day and. You know, and then the show was the next week. It was just, it was a bizarre event. Uh, just because it, and then afterwards, it's like it never happened. You know, except for the fact that I have a recording of it. <laughs> it's like a ghost. <laughs> I don't know. I forget where I was. Oh, I was just saying that, so since it was someone else's music, music I put it under the Creative Commons sharing license. We put that whole album under um, non-commercial, the whole Love Fest. Right. Even though you've got some of those songs are yours, most of them. Yeah, but I, I mean, I didn't want to go through and do it individually. I just figured. Yeah, the which whole you thing. can do. Yeah, on, you can. on uh, Free Music Archive, which you, but you can't on uh, Jamendo, which is really? kind of. A pain. Yeah, well, as far as I'm aware, you can't. And then if you look at the compilations on Jamendo, they, they're not really. Compil like like there's one artist, and then. You know, like the albums are actually where the license information is. Like, if you go to a track page on Jimindo, you can't even see the license there. You have to go to the album page. Yeah, that I know because I always have to go back when I look at yeah, or when I'm listening to a song. I hate incredibly that. Incredibly irritating. Yeah. yeah. Not a fan um, of that. But I also learned an interesting thing this week, too, uh, because uh, uh, if, if anybody out there has been using the uh, Google MP3 player, which is, you know, in your email, when you go to play something, uh, if there's an MP3 and you uh, you can choose to play or download, and then you click play and it opens up that little player, or if you're in reader and there's a, a file there, you can click the little player that's embedded there. Well, there was a way that you, you could get that code and then uh, just uh, embed it on site and, uh, you know, paste it in there, just switch out the MP3 that it's connecting to, and then you would have a player on your site. Well... Google Video, which the player was based off of, went offline recently, mm. and uh, everybody's players stopped working. That's not good. Yeah, so um, there are there are workarounds, and I think the code itself may even have been updated and uh, for the player itself, and now works because what I had to do is I have a wiki that has a bunch of embeddable stuff that was using that, and I had to go through and figure out a way to do it. Uh, because I don't know how to, I don't want to use all the storage space up on the wiki, uh, I, and I'd rather have it hosted somewhere externally, um, or on, on, uh, what is it, archive.org. So I used the Google Player, and while I was going, well, crap, now i got to find another embeddable one that I don't have to have server capabilities and all that crap for. Well, there's one called uh, Do Player, and, I, and it's a nifty little Flash player. Is it sponsored by Mountain Dew? No, it is not. Uh, I would think that too, and it's even got green buttons and everything. But and more searching around for it and looking for codes it's and how to manipulate on the it. <laughs> Apparently, it is the player that Jimendo uses, huh. so it's highly customizable. And they have a bunch of different ways. Like they show you like different versions of it you can download, manipulate, and um, and you can uh, create your own music player with album covers and uh, you know pretty much like the Jimendo player. And I think I've always thought that the Jimendo player was a pretty snazzy little player. I've always been pretty impressed by it. So finding what they used to make it, I thought was kind of cool. So uh, that would be, uh, I think it's doplayer.com. It is in French. The site is in French, so you will need some sort of, uh, you know, most browsers automatically have a translate in them, but if not, you will need to find one that does have it. But uh, that would be, let me get the link just to make sure. Uh, do player. And that's do as in like you were saying, like Mountain Dew. It's D E W, and uh, it's uh, and it's actually uh, A L S A Creations. So it's built off of open source sound cards and 
you know, the a ALSA is the uh, sound engine or the sound, uh, God, is it the engine? Because Pulse Audio is the engine built off of ALSA. Oh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> ALSA is essentially the, you know, the backing of the sound on uh, open systems. And that's what they, that's the company that builds this and built, uh, works on it, even though it works with MP3s. You know, irony, I know. But uh, so if you go to uh, alsacreations.fr slash do player, or just look up do player, D E W player on Google, you'll find it. So, you know what? I was going to say something else for my tool of the week, but that's going to be my tool of the week an embeddable player that you can customize for your site. Done. Sweet. That's it. And it works in all browsers, apparently. It's even got a nice. plugin for for uh, Opera, you know, whenever the new version of Opera comes out and people use it for five minutes and go, oh, yeah, I remember this, and then stop using it again. So, <laughs> I mean, seriously, <clears throat> it's the only time I know when people use Opera is they're like, oh, that looks nifty. Look at the new release. And then you go, oh, but it doesn't do the stuff that I like it to do. I, I used Opera for a little while because it ha has a built-in torrent client, um, and I like that. But, you know yeah. what you might like? Have you have? There's one that's very very. I think it's even built off of Mozilla. It's called uh, Wizo, the Wizo huh. browser. It has built-in torrent and it has built-in. Uh, it's got other features like eye candy-ish things. Like uh, if you go to Flickr, you can view the page using Cool Iris. So it's a big wall of like, you know, uh, you know, flip through, you know, pictures and stuff that you can look at. Uh, W-Y-Z-O, I believe, is the is the actual browser name. And the logo? R-O. Yeah. Y-Z-O. Music Gallery. And the, uh, the uh, logo looks like the Wario logo, which I found uh, incredibly amusing as well. Because then every time when I opened the... When, went to click on the button to open it, I'd always go, Wario. <laughs> Didn't we talk about Mario last week? I want to uh, say we, we did a track not too long That's ago. That's right. Okay. I want to say we recently talked about Mario and I got to do that voice a different I don't time. Think this is the right site. yzo.ro. No, right. w w y z o. Yeah, y z o or y s o. No. Wait, no. Y. The media browser. Okay. w y z o. There you go. y z o. And I used it for a while and I liked it. And then um, I, it was on my work computer because I'll try anything on my work computer. I will beat, that, <laughs> I will beat the hell out of that computer. I mean, that, I love having that. Um, but uh, and I'll download anything and install it on that and try things out and go. And it's got built in like uh, you know VLC VLC player. It looks like and it, the, I used it on version two point five and now it looks like they're up to version three. So it's wyzo.com and it's got built in torrent and bunch of fun stuff and it's it's back end is mozilla if i'm not mistaken um so yeah i guess you don't know what version it's built on well it looks like it's version 3.6.4 so i'm guessing it's built off firefox mm -hmm. 3.6.4 so that's kind of outdated at this point um i mean there's a lot of security fixes that have come out since then plus Firefox 4 has come out. But it says um, more secure right on the website. That means yeah, it's true, right? Maybe it is. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Wizo is a web browser based on Mozilla's Firefox. Some modifications are Fire Download accelerates regular HTTP downloads up to 10x! Exclamation <laughs> mark. The BitTorrent integration was cool because I didn't even realize it was doing it. And I would just, you know how usually, no, I mean, I mean, no, what I mean. Just downloading stuff in the background. <laughs> not, not in the sense that like, oh my God, all this stuff got downloaded. No, it was, uh, you know. You're actually like running a torrent server and you don't know about it. <laughs> but what it, what it would do is, you know, normally you click on a torrent and you have to go, the pop-up goes and you either download it first and then put it in your torrent or copy and paste it and put it in the torrent, you know, et cetera, et cetera. This one, you just click on it and it does it like you're just downloading a file. You know, like the regular download window pops up and you're up and running, you know. And that's the funny thing is, I mean, I used it a little bit. And the reason I got it is because I saw it as an ad on Torrent Freak, the website, and uh, saw that. And I was like, no way. And I loaded it. And I don't even know what I was doing. Oh, no, I was reading an article on Torrent Freak. That's why. 
because I was going to say otherwise, I, I rarely, I, I only use torrents very rarely. So uh, they I, don't, they don't have a Linux version. So uh, that don't. might be the other thing that, it, yeah. like I said, I did it on my work computer. So that would, my work that would, is machine. but that's beside the point. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah. Yeah. So okay, Windows people. Then, if you if you're looking for a torrent browser, they, they have a Mac. They have a Mac version as well. Actually, see, there's that weird thing again. It's like it's always it's not it's not on all three. It's on like okay, we'll do these two versions, but not this one. But I guess that's more common when you have a Windows Mac version rather than the Mac Linux. Oh, stuff. Yeah, you know? definitely. I would I would think so. Yeah, but in this day and age, it's it uh, it doesn't pop up as much as it used to. There, you know, you always had to find the alternative, and I even hear that uh, um, the Adobe Suite is on the radar. I'm doing air quotes um, for the next the next version. Well, they had that um, where people um, the vote, you know, where you could vote, go and tell Adobe that you wanted it. Right. So, in, in and I, a lot of. Go ahead. I was just going to say, and the on the radar thing, that was their response after a bunch of bunch of stuff. And like one person just said, yes, uh, Creative Suite is on the radar for the next, or for Linux on the net, or, or is on the radar for Linux. And that was pretty much the response. It was something just like that. Like it was one sentence and gave hope, but it really didn't go, oh, we're totally going to do that. You know, it, yeah. on, on well, the radar, like, what does that mean? You know, just like Steam, right? Yeah. There was all that news about Steam. All right. So let's, we're not talking about music. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's debatable, but <laughs> we weren't, we weren't really talking about music. Let's well, really I mean, does Adobe have a uh, music editor in their suite? Yes, they do. Oh, okay. <laughs> And also, a lot of bands need continue. To use, then <laughs> a lot of bands need to do artwork and other such things like that. That's true. That so, is true. I mean, most they artists should be using uh, the GIMP, GIMP or, or Inkscape. Uh, Inkscape. That's true. And there's, uh, I think I spoke once before about uh, GIMP Studio, which is a project over on Google Code, which like totally pimps out your uh, your GIMP install. They just released it. Uh, they've been working on it for a while. But, uh, yeah, I always say those, too, and I prefer those programs, even though I have to work with Adobe Creative Suite stuff at work. Bugs me. All right. So so your picks for Mother's Day, or were they, did you pick them for Mother's Day? I noticed that you... No, I didn't. Uh, much like... Uh, much I like, thought maybe some of them could have been, like, back to Wisconsin. I thought maybe right. that hit... In a, and that, I thought about you... And I was like, when I was thinking about this, I was like, well, maybe Tom and his mom had a falling out, and then there was <laughs> start again was the last one. Um, but I, I, the one that I couldn't really make happen was a friendly game of stomp to this. Um, <laughs> maybe maybe Tom's mom is like a stomp artist, you know, like does the trash cans. And, right, like like the I've actually seen stomp. Have you ever seen stomp? No. Yeah, it's it's fun for about you know it's fun the first time you see it and then you never need to see it again. Um, you mean the the movie or actual like stomping? No, I've seen actual actual stomp. actual stomp like in a theater, like the the actual performers. I've I've seen like people doing stomp, yes, but I've not seen like the musical or whatever called stomp. Right. Well, they just it's almost like a concert. They just do songs and they'll set up different situations where they do them and. But so you're talking about like the musical called Stomp? Yeah, I mean whatever. Yeah, they came through town. It, it, I, I would say they're more of a troupe rather than it being a musical because like there's no storyline or anything. So I wouldn't really call it a musical. It, that would be like calling the Blue Man Group a musical. Okay. You know, it's it's more yeah. like that. It's more of a performance. There maybe the name of the movie was Stomp Out Loud or something. They did have a, a Stomp uh, movie version, but. Oh, okay. Still, it's just them performing live. It's yeah. it's it, you know it's. I, just I haven't live. seen like the group stomp, but I have seen whatever it is that they do when Ooh. they're being stomped. <laughs> I have seen people do that. Um, but... it's interesting, useless fact: the guy that <laughs> right. uh, the guy that runs the whole who created the whole stomp thing uh, is married to Kath uh, Catherine Najimy, who is the voice of Peggy Hill on the King of the Hill show. 
Huh. There that, you go. Interesting, that is, useless fact. That is definitely interesting. I was like, this is totally not interesting until you said <laughs> King of the Hill. And I was like, huh, that is interesting. Yeah, I know. I, I don't know why they're married, and I don't know why I know that. Um, <laughs> so anyway, yeah, no, none of mine. Uh, I didn't realize till I started um, putting my songs into the uh, show post itself. That, that, that there was a Mother's Day coming up? Yeah. Pretty, pretty much, or or at least that we were theming the show that way. I knew there was a Mother's Day coming up. I called my mom. Uh, she didn't answer. I left a message. You know, what can you do? Um, you but... were like, can we start again? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm back in Wisconsin. Wow. Way to, way to bring that back. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, my show, uh, my song picks were, uh, I was uh, kicking around on, uh, on, on, uh, What's it called? Uh, CC Mixter, uh, the new dig section that they have. Uh, finally kind of getting that site. I never really got it before, and I'd go I, there. And yeah, it, I it's don't. Not, it's not organized well, and it's no. like, but I get now like. What I've had to do in the past is you have to actually like go into the HTML and get the actual pointer to the MP3 file if you want the like original. Mm-hmm. And then that's because I played one the other like a couple weeks ago, and that's how I got it. <laughs> Right. It's like I went in there and just wget it. Well, and if you don't know what wget is, then <laughs> it doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. And it's it's the thing is is the concept of it. Now that I've had to mess around with a lot more, um, not music sharing, but music collaboration sites. Yeah. Um, I get it. And what it is is that theirs is set up very similar. It's just not laid out very smart. Um, and and I mean that in the sense that if you were just a newbie coming there and checking out something, the download is actually one of them will be the song itself, and the other ones will be the mixable tracks that they are letting you use to remix whatever parts of their song they have. And it sometimes will also be the MP3 files of songs by other people that they used to remix for that song. So if you just click on something... So wait, like, one of the downloads is... The actual song. Okay, and because I wasn't able to find that when I did it, but right, and that's because it only shows up in either like the pop up window or I I don't have the site open right now, but it's uh, it it only shows up in like maybe one spot, and uh, what it does before that is it kind of shows you like in the list maybe it only shows you like maybe the first and second ones and then doesn't show the rest of the files like it'll show you a preview of like here are two of the files from it and if the original isn't one of them. I don't know. So that, that's, but I mean, and like I said, I'm not looking at the site, but if you're clicking around on it, it's not very intuitive. But since I've had to go to a lot of sites where it's like, oh, here's the files to download, here's the song that it's supposed to sound like when it's done, or here's my, you know, version of the files that I'm using, which are labeled here. So that's, so I finally got it and I was listening to it and I'm going around and I'm like, people actually do share a lot of, a, a lot of uh, samples with each other to create other songs, and I and some of them aren't that bad. Uh, actually, a lot of them are pretty good, and it's kind of impressive once you start actually looking at the list of like, oh, this was used to make this song by this, uh, you know, from this person over here, and uh, other things like that. So, kind of got into that, um, but then uh, kind of hit a lull, and I couldn't find a lot of music. So, I think I only have one or two, maybe even just one, that I downloaded off of that site, but. The beauty of it is, is that uh, we're guaranteed to have all of them being able to be used on the show because they all have to be derivatives, or be able to be derivatives. Yeah, so, no, that's that's a good point. So that's that was that was good because then I, I hate it when I'm listening to one and I'm like, oh, it's a non-derivative song and I can't use it. Yeah. One of the yeah. other. Yeah, that that's a, that's a bummer. I hate that, especially on Jamendo because, like we said before, you have to go back and look. You can't look at it while you're listening to the song. You have to do it while you're well, listening. I, to I just album. won't download anything that's not remixable. That's how I get around it. If I see when I click hmm. on it that it's not, then I'm just like, well, hope it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like the attitude. Um, <laughs> and the uh, other one I want to mention is uh, uh, the Friendly Game of Stomp This. That's actually a song uh, by uh, his, his stage name, or DJ name, I guess, is McGee. But it's uh, Michael Gregor over on Block Sonic. That's actually his uh, 
he's releasing new music every Monday, I want to say, but he's working up to releasing an album at the end of the summer. And that's one of the releases that he put out. And he's got his whole, all of his albums available, or all of his songs are available on uh, Free Music Archive. So, and he's a cool guy, and we've uh, talked about him and played some of his uh, songs that he's put on Block Sonic on the show before. And uh, just wanted to give a shout out to his stuff. And it's pretty good. It's, it's some pretty solid, even though it's, uh, you know, mainly electronic stuff, but it's, he's got some great sounds that he uses, and they're all kind of hard. You know, it's not just the usual, you know, ding ling ling ling. That's right. That's me. That's me doing light, light electronic music. Ding ling ling ling. So that's. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got. So I decided that I was going to um, actually try to talk to all these artists that are on Twitter. Um, I decided I would, I guess, break my boycott or whatever it was. Um, you You were boycotting them? I mean, yeah, I wasn't using it. That's, it was sort of, yeah. I, I guess I was unaware of this. Well, so I, it was still posting my, like, weekly thing, like my last FM stuff on there, um, on that music management um, account. Hmm. But aside from that, no, I haven't been, uh, haven't been using it, so... But I was just like, you know what, I'm. It's too hard to like go to everybody's website and find their email address, and I'm just gonna do this, right? So, um, but uh, yeah, I don't. So I guess I went like in the the Twitter feed puts all the podcast there um, as well, um, except. Well, no, that one went back up there. Maybe, maybe it got fixed. I feel like one of the some of the shows didn't make it through. Um, oh, well, the films by Chris had the wrong had the wrong date on it. I fixed that. Um, well, it doesn't matter. But anyway, you it just saying the shows that got posted up on. on there Twitter? were some that didn't get that didn't go through Twitter feed. Um, like yeah. two or three. Twitter feed will get locked up occasionally. I don't, it, ugh, it's really annoying. Like uh, when I, because I've had it happen to other things, and really all you have to do is you just log into it and uh, go look at the account and uh, or the feed that you set up and then just save it again, and all of a sudden it's working. It's it's like it gets clogged like a sink. I don't I don't understand what happened. I mean, you don't change anything. You just go in and look at it and go, yep, everything's there, but it didn't put it out, and then you push save, and then all of a sudden it puts it out, like, either instantly or, like, an hour later. I, it's, it's annoying, definitely. So, hmm. that's, that's, I mean, that's really probably what happened. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so why don't you, uh, why don't you tell us about your music picks? Um, well, so some of them are sort of picked... Well, there's two of them that are picked because I think that my mom would like them. The two by <laughs> Emperor Norton Stationary Marching Band. She was a marching band director. Okay. Um, I, I was confused about that one. I was wondering what that had to do. I, I didn't see Mother anywhere in there, and I wasn't quite sure yeah. what that was all about. And then she likes musicals. Um, I think she's seen The Sound of Music like 5,000 times. And... <laughs> I'm only slightly exaggerating. Nice. And, huh? I said nice. But oh, and so I put that one musical in there. And then there was uh, Mother Wolf, which is one of those, if you, if you go look at that track on Jamindo, that's one of those ones that's it's not clear at all, like, who the artist really is or that it's a compilation or mm. it's just, you know, I mean... Because, well, some of them will have that VA tag, and then you sort of, like, know, obviously, that it's various, uh, off various artists. But or they're veterans. It, <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, it could, it could be that. Um, veterans of the music industry. Um, and then, uh, super exotic 60s beat. I kind of thought my mom would like that, and she was alive in the 60s. So between the two. <laughs> that seems weird to say that. She was alive in the 60s. 
Oh, I wasn't alive in the 60s. No, I know, so. but for some reason that sounded like a strange statement, even though, I mean, it's it's completely true and there's nothing weird about it. It's just one of those things, like, when you said it, I was like, why does that sound weird? Well, <laughs> I guess it's not something that you say that often about people. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't know how else you would say it. They were around. <laughs> I don't know. It, it just yeah. sounded weird. Yeah. <laughs> Um. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I threw you for a loop on that one. It seems. Yeah. Well, that's not... <laughs> I was also looking at like my Twitter feed here and trying to figure out like how long I had sort of been on hiatus. But you know, yeah. That... It, I mean, I've noticed you're back up there again, and uh, you've you've done my... some some time. Yeah, my there. my music um music account was always sort of like not one I used as much as the normal account. So I'd have to go back pretty far um, to really find out when I was like sort of using it, you know, a lot. But there are a lot of po- posts on there um, because, you know, I would just like, if there was some website that like, you know, put like for a while I was favoriting things on SoundCloud and just to sort of see what happened, I... I set that up to go to Twitter, oh. you know, just to see what would happen, you know, like how does it work sort of thing. Right. Um, obviously, those last FM things get posted. So there's basically at least three posts a week because my top three weekly last FM artists and then the music show and then the talk show. Um, so it's not like it's been my, that my feed has been silent. I just haven't actually signed in and done anything for you know, ages and ages and ages. Well, I think, um, and there, uh, since I have uh, both my Twitter and my Identica account coming straight through my, uh, my IM, I have a tendency to um, graze more than, like, intently read unless there's, like, conversations going on. And what I noticed is that there was more conversation going on on it recently for you. Uh, so yeah. I think that's why it stood out to me more. Whereas more most of the time when it's just, like, links to stuff, I'll... Unless the title catches my eye, it'll it'll just it, I don't even remember reading it half the time unless it's something that I saw that was more of a conversation or something. Whereas like this person was saying something to someone else, so I, I read it more like I am. Whereas you'll ignore it when somebody sends you a link, going, "Hey, check this out," and you'll be like, "Fine." And after a while, you'll just stop checking their links and going, "Oh yeah, that's funny." <laughs> oh, I've, <laughs> I've know? never done that. Oh, but really? I don't ever talk to people on IM really, so Really? Oh. No. I don't. Hmm. Occasionally. Usually when people IM me, I'm like, uh And you're a I'll software just, developer. You know. It's like software developers well, don't actually like talking to each other physically. Like we No, well first of all, I'm not really a developer. Oh, okay. Um, oh no, that's me. I, I'm sorry. That's <laughs> you're a programmer. Um, or, uh, it, that's right, we talked about this once. But okay. Basically computer tech guys. There you go. That's we the, talk to people face to face all the time at work. See, I always feel like they. I, I enjoy talking face to face. I would prefer to talk face to face to people, but I feel like in those situations, people will IM me, and it's like, really, you can't just pop your head up over the cubicle and go, "Hey." Well, well, <laughs> we don't we don't have cubicles. Um, that may be changing, but for the time being, we don't have any cubicles. Um, so in that respect, I couldn't do that. Right. But, um, but I do I do talk to coworkers on IM, and then if it's not something we can handle over IM, I will go to their office. But I'm just talking about like Google Chat or something, you know, like just hanging out chat. You know, like people don't really just like IM me on Skype, and I don't really IM people on Skype. Hmm. Uh, I keep it open, but. Um, I just prefer like sort of the not real time nature of email. You can send an email in response in real time if you want, but nobody's like expecting you to respond right then. And I like that. Hmm. Whereas if somebody like I am me, I feel like I have to talk to them. I'm well, like, I think uh, of it more like text messaging. We're in the in the sense where like I don't really need you to sit down and hunk. You know, it's just like a hey, and then you go what, and then it's like I got but you know. 
Got one, you know, I, I couldn't I, think of a situation. And then, and then you, <laughs> that's how you talk about it. Yeah. I know. I, the funny thing was, I just recently found the uh, John Wayne Texas funeral album online, and uh, I was going to say a quote from that. That's why it had a southern twang. One of my favorite things is uh, before the song, he, go, he goes, uh, All right, let's get more heat up in the ass groove, is one of his <laughs> phrases <laughs> that he says uh, right. to kick off the song. Yeah, it's a great album. I should send you the link to that. I'm going to send it over I am, too. No. I'm, All right. But uh, anyway, but, it, you know, so it's uh, it, where I, you say see, that, I don't you think respond. of I am as, 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 like, texting at all. Well, like, see, texting, I totally do. Like, I don't even necessarily think people expect a response on text. You know, it's just like, meet me here. Or, you know, you can just be like, you know, K or something like that. I don't know. See, um, but maybe it's because I got conditioned for I am during like high school and maybe. college when you like actually talk to people on EM, you know, like they went to another college, so you didn't see them. So you just like actually right. talk to them. And now I'm like, God, I do not want to talk to people. Leave me alone. See, yeah, I, I, just, I, well, I have a friend who uh, does the exact opposite. Like he will, uh, he will write like a paragraph and then send it to me on I am. And then he'll sign off. And then I have to email him. And I'm like, why wouldn't you just send this an email? But he'll email me like, hey, what you doing for lunch? And it's like, really, that's an IM thing. I can go, nothing. Want to go somewhere? Yeah. Yes. You well, know, that's, that's an IM thing. That's what we do at work sometimes. We'll right. Like, but he'll, he'll email me that, but he'll be online. But <laughs> he will send me like a whole paragraph. And like, by the time I'm done reading it, he signed out. And it's like... It's, why did you IM me this then? <laughs> and then I'll have to email respond. Anyway, that's neither here nor there about anything. Uh, <laughs> let's let's uh, just go through some stories quick before. <laughs> yeah, I was I was just thinking that maybe we should move some stuff around <laughs> because like we spent like you know fifteen minutes on George Michael's and right uh, kind of getting. It, I think this could turn into like a Linux Outlaw show without any effort with like the amount of things that are on the the list to talk about. And I don't know how long we've been recording, but the Skype session is already at 51 minutes. So uh, yeah, that's about right. That's where we're at. It. Yeah, that that could definitely start turn into the two-hour marathons that um, that um, the guys at Linux Outlaws have. Um, but we're probably not going to do that. Because we have things to do. No, not that they don't have things to do, but right. Now in in the uh, in the notes that we have, I see you did a uh, you put a link to the um, e safe creative, and I want to say we've talked about this before. Well, the I think that we've um, I I know we talked about the save creative, but I didn't know that Jamindo was promoting it. See, that is the first place where I heard about it. Uh, they about a year ago they sent me an email on uh Jimendo and asking if we wanted to do this and i went through i it was so long ago i don't even remember what this is for well i mean <laughs> that makes sense but you know i'm, I'm not an artist on Jimendo. right no um, i know i'm just saying it, that i so know I that guess, it's been on there a while yeah and so i guess in a way there's there's not any reason for me to i mean and it's kind know. of tucked away in the corner um uh, you know even down below like on the pages that do have it it's like kind of down below even where the actual cc licenses are but uh, I mean, I would. Uh, do you know anything about uh, Safe Creative? Because I was kind of. I remember I read about it and kind of learned about it, uh, but I never really. I, I don't remember <laughs> what it is they did, but I know that we signed up for it because. Um, I, go ahead. Well, I think it's just like a copyright registry, basically. Um... I want to say it's because of the...